All right, guys, welcome back to part two of this crazy, massive, big painting. It's been a hell of a journey and really excited to share the final result at the end of this video. A uh, quick recap of what happened last week. We had some trouble tracking down the actual, uh, an actual canvas that size, and we had to call, I think like 10 different stores and just kept getting hit with no after no after no. We're feeling a bit hopeless, but finally somebody came through. And uh, yeah, we're back in business and really excited to share the results. Holy f <laughs> Check out our Instagram, Swinton's Art, at Swinton's Art. If you haven't watched part one yet, stop the video right now and go click the link wherever it's showing up and watch part one. And while we're waiting for you to come back, if you're still here, just waiting for this pause to be over, hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Do it! We realized we were gonna need a lot more space in the studio than I was used to keeping space for, uh, and it's a bit messy in there right now, so we had to do a bit of a reorganization. So once we had cleared the space for this massive piece and actually attempted to hang it for a solid 30 minutes, we got it up and realized that the ceiling was actually too low to actually hold a 10-foot canvas. I looked at the picture of where it was gonna be hung at the private collector's home and I figured that it was probably worth sending him a video of the massive scale of this because when we had previously talked about it we kind of had left it open to around 10 feet and I hadn't really realized that I thought it was specifically 10 by 10 and was stressing out about it but once we had a little bit of a back and forth these are four four by four squares so I guess that's eight by eight so maybe we do eight by eight because I'm gonna put it in a wall that it, it's like kind of that big realized that we decided we're gonna go with eight by eight feet. So after that was all settled and done and we had confirmation of the correct size, it was time to lay down the foundations. So right now we're just adding some depth to the background before we start working on the foreground here. Like to kind of make it look kind of like you could almost find it in a back alley on the street or something. So kind of a lot of drips, a lot of graffiti uh, reference and that kind of thing, just to really make it strong and have that, that badass character. So I feel like there's something really special when you just let paint kind of do its thing, especially for the background to just like inject that energy. Just let the drips kind of find their own way. It just becomes more of like an organic piece as opposed to like a very structured, methodical thing. This alone is pretty awesome in my opinion. And so after that, we decided to call it a day, get a good sleep and start fresh in the morning. Day two. Today was all about just laying on the depth. So started with more layers of dark grayscale paint and then slowly moved into lighter and lighter and lighter until I ultimately ended with getting a big ass mop to do one final whitewash over everything so that the foreground will really pop on top of it. Finished up mapping out the design. Uh, usually how I like to do it is start on the iPad and draw it out on Procreate and then move it to the canvas, especially with something this big, I'll use a projector just so I can get it exactly as close as I can possibly get it to, to the vision that's in my mind. Obviously accounting for the organic nature of painting that you want to encapsulate, but you know, when it comes to pop art, I really want to make sure that the imagery that I'm trying to portray gets through the way that I want it. Spending it all morning on getting this Da Vinci Mickey piece all set up. Hopefully we can get it done in the next day or two. Really, really coming together nice and really excited about it. As you can see, it's pretty huge. It's a larger than life Mickey, um, encapsulating all the things that matter. Childlike influence, a little bit of cash flow to support, 
and lots and lots of love. One thing that has become really synonymous with a lot of my work lately, especially, is to use a bright color or gold drip to kind of encapsulate whatever imagery or characters that I'm putting in my pop art pieces. And uh, it's kind of funny how it started because I got a commission about eight months ago now, I think, from a fairly eclectic art collector who pretty much gave me free reign to do whatever I wanted. The only parameters he gave was he pointed at one piece I had done before and he wanted something similar to that. And then he pointed at another one where I had been experimenting with a lot of drip and he was like, I want you to match those two together. Um, and once I did, it was like an eye-opening experience. Absolutely loved how it turned out and I've kind of stuck with it and just integrated it more and more into my work. For this piece, I decided to go with a nice bright blue to really make the piece pop because the private collector had mentioned that the frame that he was going to put it in is kind of like one of those old Renaissance gold frames. So to really accent that, I kind of went with uh, different shades of a really, really bright blue. <laughs> So when I'm doing these drips, I usually like to take my sweet time with them. Just because sometimes the viscosity of the paint varies a little bit and I just want to be able to tell and get a fairly decent gauge of like how much paint I need to use to get the length of drips I want. So that especially when I get over the character or over the Mickey and over the hands and stuff, I can kind of loosely measure like how far the paint is going to go down so that I can really encapsulate the piece within the the blue drips almost as like a pre-frame within the frame. few days but we're almost at the finish line so I've been retracing the Mickey multiple times over kind of deciding where I want to have it sit among all the drips and the layers and everything and I sat with it for about an hour yesterday literally just sitting there staring at it and decided to pull Mickey forward again so we're repainting all of Mickey for the seventh time and even though it was a big pain in the ass, really, really happy that I did, it really brought the piece back to life and here's the final product. So at this point, I'll be shipping it out today and really, really excited to see how it looks when it's framed and hung up in this guy's new home. So if you look behind me at these pieces of art, a bit of a precursor, these are the first pieces of art that I actually ever painted in my 20s. They're pretty sentimental to me. They were the first pieces I ever had in a show and I actually have a few of them tattooed on me. And I decided to turn these into crypto art. And to authenticate the fact that these are only gonna be crypto pieces from now moving forward, watch us burn these pieces in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. As always, we have our weekly giveaway. And again, this one's gonna be a surprise just because we've been so busy getting this massive commission out of the way but we do have something really special that we'll be sharing with you this Thursday. And as per every week, the winner will be announced next Monday.